So Apple finally ditched 8 gigabytes as the base RAM on new Macs, but they didn't make it any easier for us to pick a memory size. You might think, great, 16 gigs is the new baseline, so I'm all set. Well, not so fast. There is still that big question. Should you stick with 16 gigs or pay for an upgrade? Let's break it down so you can make the best call. To figure this out, we need to understand two things, how max RAM works and what swap is. RAM or random access memory is basically your max short term memory, but max RAM isn't the same as RAM on say a Windows computer. Back in 2020, Apple's shift to Apple Silicon introduced something called unified memory. This means one high speed memory module handles both RAM and GPU memory. So instead of separate memory pools for the system and graphics, your Mac uses one big memory pool and splits it dynamically based on what you're doing. If you're running a complex app, it will pull memory from system files, app data, and even project data in real time. Same with graphics. If you need GPU power, it divides up a chunk for that. Now, when your Mac's good enough memory to handle everything, you're golden. But as soon as you start pushing those limits, things get spicy. And Apple keeps this seamless with something called swap. What's swap? It's kind of the secret sauce behind how modern Macs handle memory limits without freezing up. If you're maxing out RAM, your Mac starts using the built-in SSD as a backup memory pool, offloading files the system isn't currently using. Sounds great, right? It is, but SSDs aren't exactly made to handle endless data swapping. Swap uses a lot of write and read cycles on your SSD, and over time, this can actually wear out the drive. So as apps keep growing and Apple keeps expanding what the system can do, you have to ask yourself, are you okay with the potential wear and tear from Swap? So where are we now? The lowest unified memory option Apple offers is now 16 gigs, which is a big upgrade from the eight gigs they used to push. You can still find a refurbished Mac with eight gigs of RAM, like an M2 MacBook Air for around 750. And look, I get it. This sounds like a steal, but I'll say this, don't do it. Eight gigs is fine if you're just web browsing or answering emails, but for anything more demanding, you're just setting yourself up for frustration. And while Apple swears by its optimization, keep in mind that its Apple intelligence is only going to get more advanced over time, packing in features that will demand more memory. And by the way, I'm currently thinking of making a video about M chips and how they work, but research for that takes time. We've all been there. Google Scholar feels like a maze, PubMed is clunky, and don't even get me started in playing all Google. Sure, it's fast, but I often end up sifting through sketchy blog posts or outdated papers. So to make my research easier, I settled on Consensus, the sponsor of today's video. It's like a search engine, but way smarter. It pulls from peer-reviewed sources and actually gives you meaningful insights instead of just dumping results on you. The usual suspects like Google and ChatGPT are fine if you're looking for broad info, but they're not built for academic stuff. And then there's Google Scholar and PubMed, which are great for depth, but terrible for speed and usability. Consensus takes the best parts of all of them and puts it into one package. The Pro Analysis feature offers concise, high quality insights from multiple papers, which is invaluable when diving into a new research topic. One of my favorite features is the Ask Paper tool. You can basically talk to a research paper, ask it for details, clarify methodologies, whatever. It's like having a research assistant that doesn't charge hourly. And if needed, there's always Consensus Meter, which visually shows the overall direction of agreement or disagreement in the research field for specific queries. This is something I've never seen in any other tool and is incredibly useful for decision making or argumentation. And if you have no idea what to search for, Consensus gives away a bunch of free digests full of interesting information. When I first used Consensus, I was honestly blown away, was skeptical at first. I mean, how much better could it really be? But after my first query, it was clear. This wasn't just another search engine. It's fast, it's accurate, and most importantly, actually helpful. I got what I needed in minutes instead of hours. It's my honest recommendation from one researcher to another. The link is in the description. Go check it out. So yeah, 16 gigabytes, hands down, the sweet spot right now. I said it last year, and here I'm saying it again. 
for most people, this is where you want to be. Hey, that's not forever. I've been working with 16 or 18 gigs for years now, and honestly, it's hella well. My workflow can be pretty demanding. File management, video research, testing out different AI tools, writing scripts, the usual grind. And then there is the video editing, thumbnails, all this fun stuff. With all that, 16 gigabytes still gets me by. But I'll admit, I'm pushing it. My memory usage is almost always up in the 90, 95% range, even with just a few browser tabs open. And yeah, even then, the Mac's still dipping into swap. I think it does that as kind of backup plan, just in case. Here's the thing about the current Mac lineup though. They are really well balanced. For most people, those 16 gigs are going to be enough and the occasional swap action won't bother them. So unless you're working with huge files or multitasking like crazy, most people won't need to throw down $200 for the jump to 24 gigabytes. Even on the MacBook Air and base Mac mini, which still come with that 256 gig SSD. Don't stress, on the Mac mini, they're using two NAND chips instead of one. And on the Air with 16 gigs of memory, SSD speed isn't really an issue at all. This brings us to talking about 24 gigs. That's the default memory on the new M4 Pro MacBooks. And it's the first upgrade option for other Macs. I've been testing out the M4 Pro 14 inch MacBook with 24 gigs of memory. And I gotta say, the difference is noticeable. It's just snappier all around when I'm multitasking between heavy apps, keeping a ton of tabs open or running background apps. And the best part, swap is pretty much non-existent. It's like the Mac doesn't even think about touching the SSD as extra memory. So now what I recommend and dropping the cash for 24 gigs on something like a MacBook Air? Honestly, no way. If you're picking a MacBook Air, just go with a 16 gigabytes. It's gonna cover you just fine for what you're likely doing in Air. The same goes for the 1600 M4 MacBook Pro, the M4 Mac Mini, and the M4 iMac. But if you're planning to take on more demanding work or want some room to grow your skills, M4 Pro, MacBook Pro with 24 gigs as the default is really where you wanna be. This is the sweet spot. Think of 24 gigs today as the new 16 gigs from three years ago. It's plenty for most tasks with room to handle more complex workflows as apps get heavier. With 24 gigabytes, you're set for a good couple of years. Everything's going to run smoothly, render times stay low, and games won't hit any memory bottlenecks. Now, if you're diving into super advanced stuff like merging massive panorama shots, editing high-res video, 4K 60 FPS, or even 8K, or working on huge projects projects in Xcode, then you might want to consider more memory. But if you want to go up to 32 gigs on the M4 MacBook Pro, it's a $400 upgrade, bringing the price up to $2,000. At that point, you're honestly better off going for the base M4 Pro 14 inch model. All right, so here's my take. I'm all for sticking with default memory sizes, especially when Apple has upped them to 24 gigs on the M4 Pro and 36 gigs on the M4 Max. For most people, this will be the sweet spot for 2025. But if you're eyeing 36 gigabytes, you're gonna have to step up to the M4 Max, which is an $800 jump. Is it worth it just for the memory? No, don't do it. Now, if you're going for 48 gigabytes, that's not level. With that much memory, you're set no matter what you throw at your Mac, whether you're the type to keep 500 browser tabs open or you are into hardcore game development, this will handle it. Even at 32 or 36 gigs, you are solid for complex 3D work, fluid simulations, physics simulations, or gaming. Should you pay for the upgrade? Only if you know you need it. It's a $400 add-on, and it's gonna make your MacBook pretty pricey. For example, a 14-inch MacBook Pro with 48 gigs costs $2,400. So for an extra 200, you could step up to a higher-end M4 Pro, $2,600 total. And at that point, you're looking at an ultimate future-proof laptop that will do everything and last you for years. The M4 Max with its default 36 gigs is somewhere in between. 36 is great, more than enough for just about everything. But that upgrade to 64, pretty tempting. Now, Apple, of course, keeps it confusing. On the M4 Pro, you max out at 48 gigs. Then, if you are on the Bend M4 Max, you are limited to 36 gigs, no upgrade option. To get 64 or more, 
So is it worth it to go for 64 gigabytes? It really depends. The unbanned M4 Max MacBook Pro kicks off at $3,700, and at least they give you one terabyte of storage for that price. The upgrade to 64 gigs is another 200, which sounds almost reasonable at this level, and let's be real, 64 gigs is a serious amount of memory. If you're a professional, you know if you need that much. But if you're on the fence, here's a tip. If you're already at 36 or 48 gigs and find it limiting, then yes, jump to 64. That will give you all the headroom you need for years to come. With 64, you will max out everything and games, all the settings will go up. And for heavy tasks, you won't even think about memory limits. Batch exporting 100 high-res photos in Photoshop while rendering 8K video in the background, done. And you will barely feel it. And that brings us to the last RAM tier in Apple's lineup, 128 gigs. Yeah, last year's max was 96 gigs, but now they got rid of it, leaving only 128, which sounds great until you hear the price tag. Hold on to your hats. Jumping from 48 gigs to 128 will set you back thousand dollars. That's basically an entire MacBook Air. And look, let's be real, 128 gigs is an overkill by any standard. Anything, and I mean anything, you throw at it will barely make a dent. Swap, you will never see it. I'm honestly struggling to think of scenarios where you'd max out 128 gigs. Unless you're running Hollywood level VFX on a laptop or planning to train an AI model from scratch, you don't need this much memory. And honestly, if you're considering spending that much on a MacBook, maybe hold off for the M4 Ultra Mac Studio. Maybe. At that point, having 128 gigs of memory, the M4 Max would actually be the bottleneck. So it's just a weird choice all around. So where does that leave you? Here's my advice. Stick with the base configs. Choose your Mac base on the chip, not the memory, and just double check your real needs. Let's quickly sum it up. 16 gigs, it's the entry point and can handle everything basic with some heavy stuff now and then. 24 gigs, Perfect for future proofing the budget to last you a solid few years. 36 gigs, it's awkwardly limited to just one Mac config. Skip it. 48 gigs, great balance for all types of heavy work without breaking the bank. 64 gigs, enough for anything, but unless you know you need it, skip it. And 128 gigs, let's face it, is just too much for anyone. And now you know how much RAM to go for. Hope this helped and maybe even taught you a thing or two about Mac memory. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.